Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Sweet Transit. I have myself a little bit of a uh, test set up here. Kind of just scraped some things together a little bit quickly in sheet mode. One of the two things that I usually hear people ask about or that I usually see people post about that they either are not understanding clearly from the question they're asking or that they are simply just saying, hey, this part of the game is really hard to understand. How do I actually deal with this? So that's what I want to go through today. First thing that I want to point out that people are usually not understanding is the signaling system in the game. There is a really good tutorial, so I'm not actually going to touch this at all. At least not in this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you actually want a video on the signaling system in the game as well. I'll break that down for you, no problem. Uh, but make sure you go through the, the in-game tutorial first. It's actually really good and it covers it super well. So if you haven't already, that's definitely worth it. Second thing, and what we are actually going to touch on in this video today, is the route planning functionality. This little box that we have right here. Right up here. See? Routes. Control R. That one. That's what I want to cover today. And the reason for that is that there is a lot of things here that you can fine tune and that you can change around to do things like multi trains and combine passengers and loading and so on. There's a lot of things that you can do here. And I'll try to cover everything in this video. I want this to be kind of the go to. If you're unsure how to set up a route, I want you to be able to go to this video and you can check okay, what did it actually mean? when you put visit. What is the small quirks about this functionality that you might want to be aware of? What does it mean when I tell for a full passenger load? What are all of the small quirks that this actually means as well? And how can I use this to my advantage as much as possible in the game? That's the point of this video. That's where I want to get to. That's where we want this to finally end up when we're done with the video. To make sure I can actually supply that functionality, I will also have this whole video timestamped down below so that you can easily just look for the exact condition that you're looking for or look for the exact action that you're looking for. That way it should be super easy for you guys to just find exactly what you need if I do this correctly. So let's get going. First off, we have something super, super simple. We have the visits. I will display this with this guy. And the reason for that is because this is the simplest route you can imagine. Uh, it literally just goes in between two stations in the same city. It doesn't even include another city. That's how simple this route is. And it just has two visits. That's all it does. So this train. Disregard the fact that we already have some passengers on there. Small, small, like... Spoiler for the future of the video. Maybe. Just maybe. We'll see. We'll see. So, I'm actually gonna use this guy as an example of the first action that we can tell our trains to actually do. So, if you're curious, actions are the ones that you have in the top left corner of every single stop that you have available. Quite simple. You just literally tell it what to do. Everything in this game is very simple. There's very few things that are hard in this game. So at Hamburg 1, it goes there, it visits. At Hamburg 2, it goes there, it visits. It just went to Hamburg 1. It went there and it visited. Right? There's not much more to it, correct? Well, there actually is. There's a few things that you can keep in mind when it comes to visits. First off. It will not do anything besides one thing at the station. It will not pick up workers. It will not drop off workers. It will not pick up any cargo. It will not interact with any cargo. There is one thing and one thing only it will do when it visits a location. And that is if you look here. It will refuel if there is fuel available. That's the only thing it does. 
if you pick visit, the only thing you can tell it to do is to refuel. Doesn't matter what filters you have or what conditions you use, it will never do anything other than refuel. The second action that we have here is pass. Pass is even simpler than visit. I feel like we're going down in, in uh, complexity here and that's exactly what we're doing. Pass is super simple. Hey, go here, don't stop. That's all you're doing with pass. The train won't stop. As you can see, it doesn't even refuel. It is like a waypoint. You can think of it as a waypoint. Hey, go to this place. Don't do anything there. Just go there and look at the nice scenery, I guess. Right? Pass is super simple. Doesn't do anything. Just go there. Don't do anything. So, the next option that we have available is, of course, the maybe more familiar ones that you use on all of your trains, probably, except for a few exceptions. So what we have here is we have a train going between Hamburg, it's the same Hamburg one as we had before, and then I have it going all the way down here to our warehouse. And what it does is it brings planks. That's more or less everything it does. And how it does that is with the load option. So the load action just loads at the destination. And then we're using the unload action to unload at the destination. Super simple. Nothing really to add here. Oh wait. But of course there is something to add here. We have always something to add here. If it's not fuel, it's people. So what we can do with this is we can actually have transportation of workers as well. So if we take a look at this guy, for example, uh, as before, we have him set up with visit, which means that he just goes there, gets fuel, doesn't do anything else. But the issue we are having, of course, is that these guys, uh, they clearly need workers, but uh, they don't have any. None of these road actually have anyone working that can be working, at least. So we need to bring workers from over here. And we can actually do that. That's a, an easy way to do it. If you played no, uh, any of Sweet Transit before, you probably would say, yeah, we just use swap workers, right? That seems like a fairly recent one. Loads and unloads workers at the same time. This is the best way to transfer your workforce. Obviously, this is the best way, right? The game says it. This is the best way to move it. So we will we'll do that. We'll do that. And then we speed it up a little bit so we can get up to this station right here. And then we notice that, wait, all of these platforms are empty. Why are they empty? Well, the reason for that is actually super simple as well. The only thing we have here is some laborers who want to go travel. For some reason. There's a background thing to why that is. I will explain it eventually, I promise. But the reason why we're not seeing any of the actual workers here, even though if we actually look at the reach for this, he can reach all of these buildings. And there is 500 guys in every single one of these. And I can promise you, majority of them are not working. So how do we solve that? Well, the easiest way is actually to go with load and unload. As I mentioned, there is actually some underlying things that you can do with this functionality right here. So if we go unload, unload, in, or unload and load instead, I'm actually going to rename these. These are super confusing. Some Hamburg 2 doesn't say anything. This is North. And then we'll rename this guy. We'll call him South. Way easier. So at Hamburg North, we have now told him that please load there and then go down to South and unload. So what do you think he will actually load here? We're having passenger carriages on it, right? So it should be able to do either laborers or craftsmen. Now we're really, really close to the platform. So it might be that even though we are actually expecting people, he might actually leave before we are done and have any people available to, to board. But no, he did actually manage to pick up a few people here. So everything is fine there. Clearly we're able to pick up people then. 
It's just that there wasn't enough people on the platform, so he decided to leave. Trains do that. If you're not there on time, you're missing your train. That simple. So here we are. We are going down here. We have set up Hamburg South, of course, with the unload action. And what that means that he will then go here. He will unload those people. They will go to the station right here. And once there is a train available for them to jump in on. You'll see that they will actually jump on to the next train that shows up. This guy on his next trip should be able to bring a lot more people. You can see that. Okay, now we actually have a lot more workers here. So he gets a full load of laborers, 512 people that he will bring down here to make available for whatever work we need. Fairly good if you ask me. And as it happens, we have the next train coming in here as well. So uh, this is the next action that we have available. And the next action that we have available is swap workers. As opposed to the load and unload workers, this way of moving workers moves workers into work. What we did between Hamburg North and Hamburg South we're just moving workers between stations. If you need to move people out of a city, meaning that they are going to a workplace, you need to use swap workers. And what this does is it unloads and it picks up new workers depending on what's available at the station actually explains it quite well here as we read before loads and unloads workers at the same time this is the best way to transfer your workforce unless you want to transfer it within the same city so he picked up the 34 laborers and 33 craftsmen that the other guy brought in before and at the bricks work where he has the other swap action he unloads them what didn't happen here was he didn't pick up any tired people, and that is actually because we didn't have any tired people waiting to be picked up. But uh, trust me when I tell you, if there were any, he would have picked those up when he dropped off the rested workers. So swap workers is what you want to use when you are going to another place where they are intended to work. Load and unload can only be used within the same city and only while you are trying to move them between different stations. Say that you want to use a central station, for example, you can use load and unload to move everyone to that central station and then use swap workers just like we did here to pick up those people from the station to go out and work. And then the last one that we have is actually Swap Travelers. And that one is also fairly simple to set up. Okay, so the next objective or the next task action, call it whatever you want, we have is Swap Travelers. And I actually set up a little bit of a demonstration here because I think there's something... Su surprise, surprise. But there's an exception to this as well. Swap Travelers in general is fairly simple. Uh, I will just allow this guy to go into the station and then we will pause him for now. We're going to go back to him in a little bit and instead we're going to follow this guy. So this guy has a little bit of a not different route. It's actually quite simple. It's more or less the same as anything else. Uh, so what this guy does is it goes from Hamburg North to Happy Land. So it goes from Hamburg North and then it goes all the way down to our happy land down here where we have more of the sheeting buildings. More or less just to show you how that works. Let's go to the train and let's go have a look at what it does. So when you finally build your second city you get available these travelers instead. If you hover over them, they will actually tell you exactly where they want to go. So we have 104 people that want to go to Happy Land. 
Apparently it's self-explanatory. What Swap Travelers does, it tells a train where you're using passenger wagons. But hey, go and pick those up and deliver them to where they want to go. And they'll pay us. That's kind of good, right? We'll get some cash. Fairly simple. Actually, not too much to mention about it. Except for one little thing. There's always an exception. Down in Hamburg so South, it would make a lot of sense if we just had him go in between those two racks. And we did learn before that, just like this guy, if we load and unload people, he can actually bring people over here, right? But that's not really what's happening. As you can see, there is actually no travelers here. And this guy will not ever be able to pick it up. We can add even more trains onto here. You'll see that these trains are actually picking up a massive amount of people, but they will never touch the travelers. Because the specialization of swap travelers is very different to swap workers. Travelers are not there to work. Travelers are there to tourism. They want to experience stuff. They want to go to another city, right? So uh, then you might say, okay, but if we can't use workers, maybe we can use you just swap travelers and bring them from the north station here all the way down to the south station. And uh, while I agree that that would be really, really nice, and technically it kind of does work, if we were to actually unpause this guy, I'll show you guys what I mean here. So this guy do actually pick up people. So the swap travelers obviously does work to some extent. Except that it doesn't move. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just standing here. Constantly just standing here, just waiting. Okay, so, uh, yeah, they won't actually leave. He'll stand here until he dies. <laughs> We're coming up on him actually being completely full. And you'll see. He's still standing here. What an idiot. So yeah, while Swap Travelers actually allows them to pick up people, they will never leave with those people. Because these guys... They want to go to Happy Land. This guy is not going to Happy Land, so they're stupid enough to get on the train, but the train won't leave because he dare not go into the right spot. So you can't actually move people in the same city. With travelers. Unfortunately, that's not an option. Editing Kianomi here. I kind of got an idea right here, and I thought that I would have found a solution to actually have people move by train as well, even when we're using the swap travelers functionality. And while I can force them to actually leave, I can't make them step off the train. So technically, you can do something like this. So we can have them actually fill up on on personnel by using instead of the until done condition you can use passenger or any other condition that is absolute and technically they will step on the train at that point but you'll see when it gets to the station that it will still not work because they won't actually leave the train itself the train is still be getting stuck here so uh yeah, thought I'd share at least. You actually have to bring each station's travelers out from one place. The benefit though is that even if we didn't have anyone here, and you're just gonna have to take my word on it here, uh, if we look at this guy that clearly doesn't have access to any of the stations, you'll see that he doesn't actually have a negative trait for not being able to travel. So. The negative trait of not being able to travel actually only impacts the city itself. So as long as anywhere in the city they can travel, you are not getting a downside from that. Which is really nice. Thank you, developers. I appreciate that. And that is the end of the different tasks or actions that your trains can do. Fairly simple, right? 
just a few exceptions. Visit allows you to also refuel the train. Passing, super simple, no exceptions at all. Loading actually allows you to load passengers as well, if you want to move them within the same city. Unloading can also be used for passengers. And then we have the swap workers that does not allow you to move people between cities or between stations either. Only if there is work on one of the destinations will swap workers actually pick up people. And then we have the swap travelers, which allows them to go in between cities for tourism. And that brings us to the second part of this video, and uh, that brings us to the conditions. So the conditions you have right here, add weight condition. There's a bunch of them, we're gonna go through every single one of them, I promise this video is gonna be super detailed. Until done is probably one of the hardest ones to actually understand what's happening. And the best way I can describe it is that until done, even the game can't describe it. The game doesn't even have a description for the conditions that you have available here. And I don't think the tutorial gives it really deep understanding either of these conditions, but I will. So what we have here is a bunch of different things that the train can do while at the station. So these are things that you can force the train to do before it leaves. When you start any new place, it will always have the until done option. That will always be the first one. You can of course remove that, but until done is always the one that you need from the start or that you get from the start at least. You don't need it. There are situations where you don't want to use it. And I'm going to show you those as well. Until done provides you with a basic thing for the train to do. Which means that he will only do what is possible to do at the moment when he arrives. He does not care about whether the location he's going to needs more than, than uh, the cargo available or the passenger available. He will only pick up the passengers that are there when he arrives and he will only pick up the cargo that is there when he arrives for a visit he won't do anything it doesn't matter what you put for a visit he will just go there fill up on fuel and leave as he will just go there fill up on fuel and leave the only four eat items that we are talking about when it comes to until done and also actually all of the other conditions will be load, unload, swap workers and swap travelers. Those are the four things that will have any impact on these conditions. Pass and visit will do nothing. So we'll forget about those. Note that should be that these conditions will work identically regardless of what action you are using. So. Uh, I won't actually focus on the action at all. I will just explain to you exactly what each of these conditions does. So until then, easiest way to explain it, quick summary. It will do whatever is available to be done at the station within the limitations of the filter that you have set. And of course, any other conditions, which we will also go through in a little bit later on in the video here in regards to multi-trains and similar things. So until then, the most basic one, it does what's available, nothing more. Never waits for anything. So, the second one that we have is time passed. This one is even easier. You can even follow it down here. So I will put this to 60. And you can see that he will actually sit here until 60 seconds has passed. It doesn't matter what else there is. If there is nothing to do, it will still sit here. If it's not done by the time when 60 seconds has passed, 
he will just leave. It doesn't matter. If we put it on one second, shortest you can do. And then we tell him to go down and he will unload the workers. And then when he comes up again, it doesn't matter that he only has 117 people and there's still 400 people waiting on the platform. He will just leave. One second has passed, so he will leave. Every single one of these conditions, and this should be fairly clear for you at this point, every single one of these conditions can be thought of as absolutes. There is no logic behind them in any way. You are building the logic with these conditions yourself. That's how you can think of these. So if you set a time limit for one second, one second is the time limit. It does not matter what's happening around that. So we're actually gonna continue from the one second rule or any of the other ones. You can of course go with like 15 seconds, 20 seconds and so on. Just keep in mind that if you don't have enough time to actually load the train, the train will leave without being loaded. And it will also sit around and do nothing happily if you provide a very long wait time. The next condition is for a specific time. For specific, yeah. for specific time is maybe one of the ones that I don't use very often. But uh, it's a cool idea. And I could see it working really, really well if you are super interested in micromanaging your rail routes. So, uh, especially with workers, maybe only with workers, honestly. This could be really good. What this allows you to do is it allows you to tell the train that, hey, unless the time today, which you can see up here, unless the time right now is 12, you should not be leaving. So unless it's midday, you should wait until it is midday. Doesn't matter if that's 23 hours from now, if that is two minutes from now, you will wait until the clock hits 12, regardless of anything else. Doesn't matter what else you want to do. If you're full, so be it. If you're empty, so be it. At 12, you leave or you wait until 12. So now we're at 5. If I were to... We're looking for 12. So I actually thought that one would scroll the time in the game, but it doesn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to speed this up a little bit. Wait for the train to actually hit 12. And here we are coming up on 12 o'clock in the afternoon here. And you'll see that as soon as it hits 12, this guy will go green and we're leaving. But it doesn't happen any other time than 12. It doesn't matter when he arrives at the station, he will always leave at 12 o'clock. Next up, we have full cargo. And for full cargo, we actually have to go somewhere else. So we're gonna go to this guy. This guy is currently set up with until done. I'm gonna tell him that when you load, you should be at full cargo. And we're actually going to tell him to also when he unloads, he's gonna be at empty cargo. These two are very, very, very connected. They are cousins, you can say. Doing more or less the same thing, just in reverse. And that is super easy to see as well by looking at the operator here. If you're familiar with programming or any other mathematical operator, you recognize these as larger than or equivalent to and also lower than uh, or equivalent to. So this guy, now if we actually want to follow up on the route specific that we have right here, so we want to make sure that not only is he actually filling up to 100%, we want to see when he does that as well. We can actually click on this guy and in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see that we have a little bit of an X right here. And just like with the timer, we can see how full he is and how full we are expecting him to be or what is the current condition 
and what is the expected condition for him to be allowed to leave. So right now he's going to load at Hamburg South. Cargo is currently at zero and we are expecting it to be at 100 when he leaves. So we're going to let him go in here. He's going to load up. We see it ticking up 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. Ninety percent, a hundred, and it let it lets him leave. Same thing applies to when he actually alive arrives to unload. We can same thing here. We can actually see him go from one hundred and then continue downwards. And what we could actually do, and this applies to any of the ones where you have a selection right here. So if you have a percentage. You can go in and you can adjust it. So you might say that, hey, when you're at 30%, so you still have 30% on your car, you can leave. This case, that doesn't make much sense because we're just going back to where he will load again. But maybe we have a situation where uh, we want to load 70% of the warehouse and then we want to bring another 30% somewhere else, right? So that actually allows us to see him continue downwards here, and then when he hits 50%, he'll leave. Simple as that. Again, everything is very, very binary. Everything feels like you're programming this stuff. And as a matter of fact, the expression that you have right here is probably the exact expression that you have in the code running in the background as well. So if it's at 100%, that means that he can leave and the train leaves after that. So that is the cargo. You have the option to select how much cargo you want. You also have the option to select how much cargo you want to have left when he leaves. And maybe the last thing that I should mention is this little button right here with uh, more than or equals to or less than or equals to is actually the only difference between these two. So while there is two different options here for full cargo and empty cargo, you can actually shift between them just by clicking this one. So now it means that if cargo is less than 0%, then he's allowed to leave because he's unloading. We can also tell him that if cargo is more than uh, 75%, you're allowed to leave. That would mean let me know in the comments if you are aware of what this would mean. In the meantime, what we are going to do is we are going to continue to our next condition. So we covered full cargo, we covered empty cargo, and we are now going to full passenger load and no passenger load. Which means that we can't use our lovely wood train anymore. We need to find something a little bit more sturdy. And that should be this guy. This guy is bringing all kinds of good stuff over to the warehouse over here. Currently we can see that he's bringing a good mix of a little bit of everything. Some craftsmen, some normal laborers. But we, what we don't really see here is that, hold on, you're at only half full, right? But of course he leaves because there's nothing more to do here, even though these guys might actually be tired in the time soon here. So if we want to force him to, hey, maybe you should actually make sure that you leave full because we are low on fuel, okay? maybe. Or uh, we just don't want trains to run empty. We can actually tell him that, hey, when you leave from Bricksworks, I want you to be full passenger load. And then we might say that, okay, he goes between South and Bricks works, so Hamburg South to Bricks works. So we probably want him to go full from, from the Hamburg South as well, right? So if we're full here and we're full when we're leaving Bricks works, then that should be good, right? Because that means that we will always have people on the train. And I guess you're absolutely right. We will most definitely always have people. So he's picking up 520 people here, just as expected. And we are about to roll into the Bricksworks. But you might notice something right here. If we look at the condition right now, it is already met. 
So you'll notice this guy doing something not really intended. But again, it's back to this idea that the trains doesn't have a logic to it. You build a logic for your trains. So these wait conditions, if we continue running the game, he'll stop, realize that he's already done and leaves again. Even though he has 520 craftsmen right here, and these guys need another thousand. So this is one of the, the more nuanced options when it comes to the conditions. This does actually apply to the full cargo and the empty cargo as well. The reason it doesn't change as big, or the, the reason that this does not have such a big impact when it comes to cargo is because you're using the unload and the load functionality. If you're selecting load here, it can never unload anything. If you are selecting unload here, it can never load anything. It will always just do that one action that you selected. Swap workers is different. Swap workers allows you to both load people and unload people. So this guy will constantly now just go around and around with these 520 people because the condition is always met. How we could change this is technically two different options. First one is to use multi-trains. Second one is to use one of these fully rested or fully tired options instead. I will start by showing you these that specify fully tired or fully rested instead uh, to begin with. And then we'll go into the multi-trains just after this section. Again, you can find the uh, timestamps down in the comments below if you are actually interested in those. So, we have passengers at 100% and the issue we're having is that the, that condition is always true. So what do we need to do here? Well, we want him to actually stop, but we still want him to leave with 100% of people. But when he leaves from our bricks work location, we want him to leave with people that are only tired, right? So we'll add that one as well. And what it does then, it says that if rested is fewer or equal to 0% of the people on the train, this guy is allowed to leave. So if we look at what's happening now, He will finally leave after he has delivered these people so you can see that the passengers themselves are still at 100 percent we are still full keeping a full train so to say it's just that we are waiting until the passengers themselves right here is at zero percent rested so everyone on the train is now tired, and the train was allowed to leave. Same thing applies when we are getting to Hamburg, we can add for fully rested passengers. And what that does is of course to add rested at higher than or equal to 100%. Meaning that if we are having people on the train that is every single one of them is rested, meaning they're ready to work. Then we allow the train to leave. Until then, you're not leaving at all. And then we go back up here and again we'll have the same situation. So he will drop these 520 people off and he'll pick up some new ones. So that is the way that you can work with the swap workers option and allow yourself to have trains that are a little bit smarter. Second condition that we still haven't covered, otherwise we've actually covered every single one in this list, is the full fuel. It is super simple. It looks at this guy, compares the numbers. So if the fuel is at 100%, it's allowed to leave. Right now that's not the case. So if we were to add it onto here, you can see that it says 95%. Since there is no fuel here, he will never leave. If we were to drag this down a little bit, allow it to be 95%, it 
he will leave instantly. Nothing really new there. That's a super simple one to use. It just makes sure that your trains do not leave unless they have a lot of fuel in there. To keep in mind, of course, if you are not delivering fuel, you will have all of your trains eventually standing around waiting for fuel. That will never come. So don't do that. Generally, fuel at 100% I don't use anywhere other than maybe at refueling stations. But in general, it's better to just make sure you have enough fuel. Refueling is actually instant. So if you look at this guy when he arrives, it's instantly at 100. He doesn't even stop before he's at 100. Okay, so I allowed the train to run for a little bit here and uh, we actually run out of workers at one point and uh, we're having some issues right now i still have it set up the way that we decided before that it actually works however it doesn't so previously we had the issue with the full passenger load that when it was full it continued to just go and go and go and go and go regardless of the fact that he didn't actually complete anything. The same thing actually applies to the rested at, and this is even more devious. Rested at 100% and rested at 0% is true at the same time when your train is empty. So this is one of those edge cases where you can run into issues with trains actually going between places but not doing anything, so it's really hard to diagnose without looking into the specifics of the route every time. So my suggestion to you every single time you build a route logistic in any way is to never remove the until done. And the reason for that will be really, really clear when you get, get to thinking about it a little bit here. Any time your train stops at the station, until Dan tells it that if you have anything to do, you should do that. Meaning that if there is passengers here that wants to go on a train, you should allow them to get on the train. Same thing if there is passenger on your train that wants to get off, you should allow them to get off. This alleviates all of the issues that we have been having with the rested at and the rested at full. There is one more thing that we need to do for this to work. You notice that it was just here, but it's still left and it doesn't have any people on it still. And that is to click this OR button. This is probably one of the most powerful parts of Sweet Transit is this button that changes it from OR to AND. It allows you to build extremely complex different ways of actually moving people and cargo around in your network. Right now we're gonna use it for a fairly simple one. We will just use it to tell it that both of these conditions has to be true. Meaning that when it gets into to Hamburg South here, it needs to be sure that it has done everything that it can do at the station in regards to swap workers. And it also needs to make sure that every single one on the train, since 100% of the people on the train, needs to be rested. Which just there hit. So 424 people is rested and it left. Does not look for the fact if there is full passengers, then we need to add another one. And we can add to that one as well and say that hey every single one on the train needs to be rested the train needs to be full and you should be done with anything that you need to do at the station in this case we could technically remove this until done but it doesn't make any difference having it there so just leave it there does not impact it at all what I would be careful with is using this passengers at 100% where your industries are. And the reason for this is that 
sometimes you might not deliver a full load like this. We have 424 people here. So if this guy were to go there now and try to actually pick those up, and we were to add a full passenger load, you'll see that he'll be sitting here for literally ever. Both of these two are actually true right now. And they remain true when the 424 people actually stepped on the train. But he will never leave because the passengers will never be true. So be a little bit careful with the passenger load requirement at your industries. I prefer to use the until done for most of my, my route. But it's good to have the option and knowing what you can do outside of that if you're having a specific requirements somewhere. So this setup should be pretty good. It will now wait at this station until the train is full. And then it will leave and it will fill up this place with as many people as it can and make sure that when it leaves from there no one on the train is rested, meaning that it won't leave from this place with people on the train that could still work here. And it will also wait for everything to be done. Meaning that even though the requirement for bricks work is that everyone should be rested, so it unloads everyone right now. Technically, once this hits zero, Rested is considered as true, because if there is no one on the train, at the same time the train has everyone being rested as everyone not being rested. It's this cat in the box, right? The cat is both dead and alive. You know about that one. So as it goes, it will actually still leave, meaning that if there is no one to pick up, it doesn't just stand around waiting for nothing. Okay, so that is a short overview of how this looks and functions and works. Uh, I will also give you a few extras here at the end, just for you that are dedicated enough to sit around in this video all this time. I appreciate that. How does that sound? You like that? I like that. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. First one is that you're actually able to specify exactly which track you're supposed to use. I covered this in my top 10 items that I wish I knew about Sweet Transit. And I think it bears repeating. So if we go to the Hamburg South right here, we have it right here as well. We can click on this little mouse pointer i guess it is it says reselect destination and something that you can read there it says you can select a specific rail the train will stop at while using a station by holding control pressing on your desired rail piece so if we hold in control we click on this one you don't actually have to hold control while doing that you can literally just uh, click on this one and then hold control and click on anywhere on this route. So we can click over here. We can click over here. Anywhere on that. And he will go to that specific spot. And stop. Now this is occupied. Because this guy can still select any of them that he wants. His route doesn't actually specify a lane. As opposed to this guy that actually says Hamburg South. Station at Trail. And I think if it was a little bit smaller here, we would be able to even see. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can do this. No, you cannot see exactly which rail it is. But yeah, it specifies at least that, hey, he has a specific rail identified. And this little two here identifies that rail. So he will actually stop in the middle of this whole place. Like that. But that's probably not what you want. You probably want to use this even for your own benefit. So you could do something like this. And you'll notice that what he does now. 
he overshoots. So this, if you want to, you can actually fine-tune to the point where... If you select it right here... He stops right there, and you actually do have a little bit of space left here. So if you're really, really squeezing in things, this is a way that you can get an extra... train under it. Kinda nifty, right? Not an extra train, but maybe an extra wagon at least. So, uh, if you're usually doing 13 like I do here, you can go with 14 wagons. Very nifty. I like it. Okay, so the last little tips and tricks that I want to give you right here is in regards to the trains themselves. I know this video has been mostly about the routes here, so I figured we can use another little, another little option available for us. So if we go back to our train right here, you can see that we have a small issue with him. And it's not actually that he's standing around waiting for everyone to be rested, that is kind of what we were wanting to do. But the reason he's standing around is because we can't fit any more laborers, but keep just bringing a bunch of laborers all the time, even if I speed this up a little bit here and we follow him along here. You'll see that when he goes back here and he picks up people, he's just gonna refresh this with a bunch of new laborers. And so this repeats. So now he'll, he'll go back there and you'll see that he'll stand around here and the rest of it is just kind of we're just kind of waiting a bunch. What we would of course like him to do instead is to bring these craftsmen. Because we do have craftsmen. Craftsmen are definitely available here. It's just that he just doesn't pick them up. So how do we actually force him to do that? Well, we could just make a new train and we could tell this filter that, hey, uh, please bring craftsmen. And then we can clear this guy and we can do... We can just follow him again, and we'll see that, yeah, now he brings Craftsman, that's really good. But if we continue running this for a little bit... First off, you can see that we actually have another problem right now. Well, we have a lot of laborers that we brought before to here. That's now down to 10% average rest. So they all just need to go to sleep. Please let us sleep, they say. And you can see more of them and more of them are dropping off here and now none of them are working. And while... This guy is set up with craftsmen, he doesn't pick them up, right? And these guys are just bringing more and more craftsmen, even though this guy is out of laborers now. So we have the same issues, just turned around to the other side. So what you can, of course, do when you have this amount of people that's needed is you can add another lane. So we can do something like, like this, and then we can have each of them. So we have one train that is going with... Now, let's see... Bricksworks. So we can have one that goes with Bricksworks with uh, Craftsman. And we can have one that goes with the Craftsman, Craftsman's other workers, the laborers. And that would work. That's, that's gonna function. I don't see any issues with doing that. But uh, say that we had a lot smaller of a workforce here. And now we can bring 520 people... But this guy only needs 466, right? So what we get then... We get 520 people. But when it gets to here, it can't even unload that many people. So it kind of just stands around here and we're back to square one again. So what we want to do instead is we want to be able to combine these, right? That was the main issue we had from the very beginning. First it's just brought a bunch of laborers, we tried to resolve that, and now it brings just a bunch of craftsmen. So how do we actually force it to do both? And do both at a reasonable rate? 
Well, I am actually cheated a little bit, and you can see that we have a train right here, which has two craftsmen on it. Thing with this is that all trains can actually be specified exactly what they are supposed to bring. This guy has been specified that, hey, you should always have some craftsmen. But we also want some laborers, right? So uh, if we right click one of these cabins, cabins, you can select lock people. And then we can select laborers. And what this does is exactly as you expect. It actually forces them to bring laborers. You can clear out the guys sitting around here, and I'm actually gonna go back and do until then. Just so we don't have him standing around unnecessarily, because we have people on both ends with no issues. But what you'll see now is that he will actually load equivalent amount of both versions. So he picks up 280 craftsmen. And if we add the filters that we allow him to... Uh, he should be filling up on the other ones as well, if you give me a second. There we go. And at the end over here, you'll see that he also unload both of, both of them. Need to remember to have the filters correct. Or if you don't use any filters, that works as well. It's identical. So what you have right here is a train that will continuously fill up with 280 craftsmen and 200 laborers. There will never be any differences in between this. He will always keep 280 craftsmen and 200 laborers. The reason for that is actually quite simple. I'm going to send him back to the train depot just because we get a better overview there. But if you look at this, you can actually see that we have seven of these guys that are for craftsmen and we have six of these guys that are for laborers if you look at these they can hold 40 personnel for each wagon so if you do the mathematics you'll soon come to realize that we'll get 280 craftsmen and 200 workers for each time we deliver something and you just do that by right-clicking, selecting lock people and laborers or craftsmen. It's really that simple. So yeah, that's how you make multi-train multi for passengers if you want to use that. So this train looks a little bit different again. But uh, in the spirit of multi-trains, you can also add the same station twice. So uh, if we continue with our complicated setups here, you have the bricks work right there. You have the Hamburg right here. We've added both of them right after each other. And we have one Hamburg with load. We'll change one Hamburg to swap workers. We'll have one bricks work with unload and we'll swap one with bricks works to swap workers. We can also go in right here and we can tell this guy that, hey, can you bring laborers? You can bring craftsmen, you can bring laborers, craftsmen, laborers, craftsmen, laborers, craftsmen. And that should be pretty good. And if we actually look at this guy, you'll see that he brings both laborers, craftsmen and also stoneworks. So that way you can do multi-trains for anything you want. In between the option to lock goods and people, and also all of these options to combine stops and add conditions and change different actions, you can more or less get the trains to do anything you want. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that the conditions are absolute actions are absolute and for the love of god don't remove the until then one that'll be it for me today i hope that you have enjoyed this video if you did click that like button 
I really enjoy that. If you want to see more of Sweet Transit, maybe get another guide. Let me know down in the comments below as well. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye everyone.